In this video, we will discuss about the genus Strangulus. The species of the genus Strangulus are also called as berserk nematodes because of the male nematode has a bursa like structure at the posterior end of the body. And these are also called as red worms. Genus Strangulus contain three species, those are Strangulus vulgaris, Equinus and Edentatus. And these are the nematodes of equine and their predilection site is large intestine. To be specific, in the cecum and colon of the equine. And let us come to the egg of the Strangulus species. The egg is oval in shape and which contain segmented embryo and which is covered by a thin shell membrane. Now let us come to the Strangulus vulgaris and the adult worms are present in the cecum and colon of the equines and which bear two ear shaped dorsal teeth. Now let us come to the life cycle of the Strangulus vulgaris. The life cycle is direct which means there is no involvement of intermediate host and the eggs are wedded in the pieces of the host thereby it will hatch in the environment to produce infective stage larva. This infective stage larva enter the host by the ingestion of the host, in ingestion of the larva, infective larva, thereby inside the host it will mature to produce the eggs and those eggs are wedded in the feces. The wedded eggs in the, in the feces will hatch in the, inter, in the environment to liberate L1 larva. The L1 larva is rabbitiform, which means the esophagus of these larva will bear the posterior bulb-like structure and these molds to form L2 larva again L2 mold to form L3 larva the L3 stage larva is the infective in case of strangle and which is covered by a protective sheath and these larva are called filiriform larva in case of strangle it is called as strongly firm larva and these does not possess a bulb stick bulb shaped structure at the posterior end of the esophagus of this larva which differentiate them from the rabbitiform larva and these infective larva will enter the host while grazing and after entering into the host they will penetrate the intestinal wall and during the penetration the again L3 will mount to form L4 and they will start migrating in the intestinal wall and enter into the anterior mesenteric artery interior mesenteric artery containing L4 larva and this large number of L4 larva inside the interior mesenteric artery will leads to the formation of thrombi and aneurysm. Aneurysm is the condition in which the thickening and dilation of the arteries will happen because of the irritation produced by the these larvas and the aneurysm is of several types but in this case the aneurysm is because of the uh, strangulus vulgaris worm therefore this is a verminous aneurysm and after 45 days of infection it will goes back to the wall of cecum and colon and during penetration of the wall of the cecal of, uh, wall of cecum and colon it will mount to form L5 and then L5 is present in the lumen where it matures to lay eggs and those legs are wedded in the feces of the host. This is about the life cycle. Now let us come to the pathogenesis. Because of L4 stage larva present in the anterior mesenteric artery which will cause end arteritis which means inflammation of the arteries and more specifically it is the inflammation of the inner wall of the arteries and which will leads to the end, end arteritis and thrombus formation and thrombus formation initially leads to the thickening and dilation of the arteries arterial wall and again this induces the verminous aneurysm and if the thrombus is detached from the from the wall then it will lead to the embolism condition and this thrombus may lead to the occlusion of the coronary artery and iliac artery 
which is because of infection of the coronary artery and iliac artery and this leads to the temporary lameness in the host and the second condition in the affected host are seen is colic that is colic in the horse colic is mainly because of the pressure of cranial mesenteric artery on the nerve plexus which is caused by the migrating activity of the larva and in some cases there is a diarrhea and which eventually leads to the emaciation lameness and anemia anemia is because of the adult has the ability to suck blood and the type of anemia is normocytic and normochromic now let us come to the diagnosis diagnosis is mainly based on the fecal examination for egg and detection of anterior mesenteric aneurysm by rectal palpation and it can be diagnosed based on the postmortem examination in the examination there may be ascites emaciation and anemic condition now let us come to the treatment aspect fenbendazole ivermectin and thiabendazole this can be used under the supervision of the veterinarian this is about the species strongylus vulgaris the remaining species that is strongylus equinus and strongylus identitas will see next video thank you